Okay, guys. <clears throat> Welcome to the opening act. I guess I'm the opening act of the nonresident.fm online music festival. Um, big shout out to Armand who put this all together. And um, before we get into the rest of the day's programming, we have a lot of time, musical artists ready to play music for you guys. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Shishi. I'm an electronic music producer and DJ. But today, I want to start us off with something a little bit different. So for the next half an hour, we're going to be doing a guided meditation that I'm going to lead you guys through. And let's go into this day on the right foot. Um, let's go into this day from a place of openness and love and enjoy all the amazing music that we have coming up. So before we get started, I just want to provide a little bit of context for what this meditation is for and what the purpose of this meditation is. So right now in the world, we are collectively experiencing a lot of sadness and a lot of fear. And it can be very easy to be overtaken by that sadness, that grief, and that fear, and to not know when it's going to end or how to deal with it. And so this meditation is just going to be a short stretch, a short exercise to see if we can get a little bit of clarity about where this sadness and fear comes from and how we can negotiate it with, with it better to live more lovingly and with more acceptance. So to begin, if everyone can please close their eyes. And we're just gonna begin with a brief inquiry So closing your eyes and just feel the gravity of your sitting. The sensations of your feet on the floor, of your arms resting on your knees or your legs. And take a moment to connect with your breath. Either feeling the sensation of air coming in through your nose as you inhale and coming out through your nose as you exhale. Or the rising and falling of your abdomen. And just notice how your breath continues perfectly, reliably, with or without your conscious attention. And when we place our attention on our breath, it's really an act of gratitude and an act of acknowledgement for this beautiful life force that just continues to exist within us. It's worth asking the question, are we doing the breathing or are we doing or are we being breathed? by something greater than our sense of identity. So just allow yourself to follow your breath, cover the breath with your awareness. See if you can follow the breath from 
the beginning of the inhale all the way to the end of the exhale. And if you notice your mind wandering into thinking about the past or the future or analyzing something in the present or you notice yourself feeling some sort of emotion, restlessness, boredom, irritation, joy, peace. Or you notice any physical sensations that you may be feeling. Soreness, pain, itching, numbness, tingling, or even pleasant physical sensations. Just allow any of these thoughts, emotions, or physical sensations to arise and pass away and gently bring your attention back to your breath. Now, as you do this, it will become evident that no thought, feeling, or physical sensation remains like waves arising and falling back into an ocean. The basis of thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations is change. When we connect to our Now, as you rest in this open space, just allow yourself to do this. Without you, without you, the whole acceptance of the presence is here. From this space of total acceptance, What is here? Just simply allow yourself this moment to retire yourself from the job of problem solving. And see what remains. And nothing needs to be fixed or 
spot change. From this space of total acceptance, total openness, I want to be clear that this is not the same thing as being lazy or giving up or not trying to make positive changes for yourself. On the contrary, when we live in the space of true open acceptance, when we can allow for reality to be what it is, without denying it or lying to ourselves, when we can process and go into situations with a clear heart, with pure intentions, free of reactivity or negativity. And for all of us who are lucky enough to be able to sit here comfort of our homes and share this moment together. And so many others cannot in these times. We have an opportunity to constantly inquire into what is real constantly meet each moment with acceptance and love so that we can act from there to help those who need it. So I would suggest and encourage us all to treat these uncertain times, not as a tragedy, not as a great depression, but rather as a beautiful gift as a beautiful, beautiful gift to cultivate our acceptance, our patience, our compassion, and most importantly, our relentless commitment to what is real, not what is fearful, not what is fearfully trying to convince us that it's real. And now, for the second half of this meditation, <clears throat> you need a second to move around a little bit, stretch anything, you can take that now. And I would ask and encourage us all to do our best for the second half of this meditation, to really be still inside our bodies. We still our bodies, our mind will eventually follow.
I want to investigate two primary emotions that many of us may be feeling during these times. And the first of those emotions is sadness. And before I move forward, I'd like to caveat everything by saying, I truly deeply encourage you all to not believe anything I'm saying at face value, but take it and inquire within yourself to see if it's true. When we feel sadness, it often masquerades as other emotions, anger, frustration, But when we inquire within, we often find that no matter what negative emotion we're feeling, it usually is a mask for either sadness or fear. And sadness and fear are powerful emotions. They're useful emotions. They're not pleasant to feel, but they're useful because they carry within them a message. It's like an alarm clock telling you to wake up to something. And in the case of sadness, the message is that there's something that you deeply care about. There's something that you deeply care about in the past that you wish had gone differently. Something you had said or done, something you wish you didn't say or didn't do. And to make this very specific, in these times, many people are finding it difficult to stop themselves from continually looking back and wishing that certain countries had done things sooner or that people had done things sooner or differently. And that is the source of lots of sadness. But if you truly investigate the sadness with why you are even capable of feeling it. It's because you care. It's because you have a lo enough love for humanity, for the people you care about, and for yourself. And in that way, we can use sadness. When we feel sad, we can use that as a beautiful reminder to drop into our love for those around us and ourselves and the collective humanity that we share this earth with. The second emotion that many of us may be feeling right now is fear. And just as sadness relates to our past, fear always relates to our future. And the message in fear is that there's something that we currently have that we may lose in the future. Or there's something that we currently do not have that we really desire in the future and we don't know if we will get it. And again, both of these are valid feelings, especially in this situation, to look into the future and not certain of what's gonna happen. 
is very scary. But we can only feel that fear because again, there's something that we deeply care about. There's something that we love. And in this situation, that could be our lives, our health, our way of life. The lives, the health, the way of life of the people that we love. These are all things that are being threatened right now in a very real way. And only because we care about them, because we love them, do we feel fear. So again, fear, while an unpleasant emotion, is like an alarm clock. Every time we feel it, we can use it. We can be grateful for it as a reminder to say, oh, that's right. I really care about this. I really love this. Let me act from that place in this moment. And both of these emotions, sadness, which exists in the past, and fear, which exists in the future, both of them cannot exist in the present moment. It's literally impossible. So when we connect to the present moment, to the vast, generous present moment that allows everything to be just as it is, then the thoughts we have about what could or should have happened in the past that make us sad, and the thoughts we have about what may or may not happen in the future that make us sad, when we rest in the present moment by connecting to the breath, connecting to our senses or going out into nature or sitting in stillness, a million ways to do it. When we connect to the present moment, we're able to see these thoughts for what they really are. Just thoughts, just imagination, as real in this moment as if you were to bring up the Eiffel Tower in your head doesn't mean that it's suddenly here. And again, I want to be clear that this is not about dissociating from our emotions or feelings. It's not about using meditation or using something to distract ourselves from the very real feelings that we're feeling. On the contrary, it's about going deep within our sadness and within our fear and inquiring why they're arising. And that's where the freedom from the feelings lie, not in ignoring them or reacting to them. So how do we practice resting in this pure, spacious, loving awareness that allows for everything to happen? How do we practice being the mirror? It's not changed by whatever it is in the past. No matter how ugly of an image you cast onto a mirror, the mirror remains perfect. It's something that you have to cast onto it. Take that with our minds. So for the last this conceptual put it into practice. 
And I would encourage everyone on this call to just give yourself the gift of checking in with yourself every day in this way for five to 10 minutes. It doesn't need to be a long time. And when you start to do it daily, then you start to notice random times in your life when you're not formally meditating and you start becoming more mindful. So just sit and simply rest. And notice the arising of thought. See if you can notice what your next thought is. Or what your next emotion is. See if you can notice it bubbling up. Where do thoughts come from? And where do they go? Are you truly the thinker of your thoughts in the way that they might appear? Do you really have agency over the next thought that arises? Or as things happen? Just pay attention where they come from, where they go. As you practice this, you'll find more and more that. Just observe them without identifying. So I would just encourage us all to continue this practice. And um, I know we covered a lot. I just want to make myself available to anyone out there who may have questions or may be interested in exploring this more. So you can go to Instagram.com slash shishi music shi shi music and just shoot me a direct message and um thank you guys so much for joining me thank you again armand for setting this all up and lots of love stay in love with yourself stay in love with the world <laughs>